Did you hear the part about them taking the, the desired gene of frost resistance from a flounder and putting it into a tomato? Have you seen flounders mating with tomatoes very often around here? <laughs> good. I thought Bellingham was wild, but it's not that wild. Okay, good. So the, the reality is when they do that, they will go ahead and put a viral promoter that turns on that characteristic all the time. At the same time, they'll put in an antibiotic resistant marker. So how they see if the cell is going to survive is they'll douse it with antibiotics. And those cells that actually have an antibiotic resistant marker can survive in the presence of the antibiotics. And they say, aha, it's reading our desired gene. Excellent. Let's clone that cell now and turn it into a plant. So with the genetic modification process and the cloning, there's a potential for hundreds of mutations, meaning you won't necessarily get the exact desired outcome that you are looking for. You can't. And in fact, if scientists want to insert a gene into the exact same plate into another plant, they can't. There's no way. They don't know where it's going to insert. It's all by chance. You saw this. So the interesting piece for me is there's an entire field in functional medicine, which I study. It's called epigenetics. That's called genetic variation. That looks at minor tweaks, either in the genome or outside of the genome, and how it affects the rates of disease. You can have a single single mutation, what's called a nucleotide polymorphism, single little base pair in the DNA, one, one, not hundreds, one that's off of its normal cycle. And you can increase your rate for hypertension, cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, meaning stroke, one. So what happens when you shift hundreds? Nobody knows. No scientist can tell you they know for sure, the outcomes of the genetic modification, not a single one. They know that. They can't determine every single outcome. They will look for similarities, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So we, and this is just a diagram showing the single nucleotide polymorphism, how that one SNP, and this specific SNP, um, has been studied ad nauseum, and it's showing a, a drastic increase of disease.